Sony is currently dominating the home console market in today's gaming landscape. The PS4 continues to sell at an exciting pace and its exclusives have been receiving very strong sales and incredible reviews. But where did it all start? Well, believe it or not, it actually started with a little company called Nintendo. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we'll be taking a look at the history of Sony PlayStation Part 1. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and click on the links in the description to vote on upcoming content. The history of the PlayStation console can be traced back to 1986. An individual working at Sony by the name of Ken Kutaragi had worked with Nintendo and convinced them to use a Sony audio processing unit for the Super Nintendo. Wanting an accessory for their Super Nintendo and feeling comfortable in their relationship with Kutaragi, Nintendo approached Sony to develop a CD-ROM add-on, which would tentatively be known as the PlayStation. This new exciting add-on was scheduled to be shown at the 1991 Consumer Electronics Show, but Nintendo's president, Hiroshi Yamauchi, put the kibosh on that. You see, Yamauchi decided to actually read the contract and found an alarming thing. It placed control of these CD-ROM games directly in the hands of Sony. Feeling frustrated and betrayed, Yamauchi swiftly ended their joint business agreement. Now without a partner, Sony approached Nintendo's rival, Sega, and pitched a similar joint project. However, Sega's board of directives slammed the door in Sony's face, claiming that they clearly didn't know how to manufacture hardware or software. Shut up, Quadrupet. Without a hopeful future or partnership, Sony decided to make its own console, based on the Super Nintendo, while keeping that PlayStation name. By 1992, Nintendo and Sony had reached another potential business agreement. The PlayStation would have a port for SNES games, and Nintendo would receive the profits from the sold titles. Not wanting any of that, Sony decided to completely abandon Nintendo. The PlayStation name, which was two words, that's why I'm saying it that way, was combined and work on the new console began from scratch. Meanwhile, Sony looked towards the teenage and young adult market, rather than the children's market that Nintendo was currently dominating. To further distance themselves from Nintendo, Sony decided to focus on 3D polygonal graphics rather than 2D sprites after witnessing the success of Sega's Virtua Fighter. Shut those covers as soon as they're done spraying. Also, keep your eye on that woman in the cell. Don't get careless now. Sony also didn't have the brand recognition that Sega and Nintendo did at the time, and Sega had a massive arcade division to draw from. To combat this problem, Sony created exclusivity deals with various major publishers, including Namco. <laughs> By late 1994, the PlayStation was ready to go. It released in Japan on December 3, 1994 and was an instant success, selling 2 million units in 6 months. It was subsequently released in the United States on September 9, 1995, and while it saw success, it trailed in sales behind the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo. However, Sony had a fantastic 1996 due to their support of third-party developers, wide demographic, expansive game library, and great reviews. Their monthly output on games increased from 4 to 6.5 million units, and the PlayStation sold twice as fast as Sega's new console, the Saturn. There was definitely a new player in town, and they were about to get a whole lot bigger. And that's pretty much how it happened. Sony had secretly begun work on a follow-up console shortly after the original PlayStation was released in 1994. However, their secrecy was soon betrayed, and word began to spread by 1997 that Sony was working on a new console. This console, the PlayStation 2, was officially announced on March 1st, 1999. Hype was extremely high for this new console, as it promised a slew of new attributes, including internet connectivity, backwards compatibility, high power and performance, and a built-in DVD player. The console was finally released throughout the world in the year 2000. The console and its accessories sold 250 million worth of product on the first day alone, shattering the Dreamcast's first day numbers of 97 million. Like most hot new toys, demand was high but supply was low, and PlayStation 2s were going for as much as $1,000 on eBay. It would later go on to become the best-selling video game console of all time, moving roughly 150 million units by March of 2002. PlayStation 2 is here, it is hot, it's quickly disappearing from stores in its first day on sale nationwide. Wide. The success of the PlayStation 2 can be attributed to a wide variety of factors. The PlayStation brand already had a huge, devoted fan base, and the PS2 promised even better experiences. 
It also came with a slew of fantastic games that were not available on other consoles, including Metal Gear Solid 2 and Grand Theft Auto 3, whose success would give rise to one of the biggest video game series ever. It also enticed non-gamers with its built-in DVD player, as the PS2 was actually slightly cheaper than a lot of standalone DVD players at the time. Go figure. The success of the PlayStation 2 effectively sunk the Dreamcast, ending Sega's foray into the home console market. It also obliterated Nintendo's GameCube in sales and reception. That probably felt pretty darn good for Sony, considering the history between the two companies. Are you all done cleaning up? Yes, but wait till I tell you what I found. Actually, the only main competitor to Sony was the other new kid on the block, Microsoft. The Xbox was considered a very capable and respectable machine, and their fancy new feature called Xbox Live changed the face of console gaming forever. To compete with Xbox Live, Sony launched the PlayStation Network Adapter in 2002, which allowed players to play online through the developers' servers. It also released multiplayer-focused games to coincide with this adapter, chief among them being SOCOM US Navy SEALs, which would go on to sell over 1 million copies. Got it. By the end of 2004, the PlayStation 2 was steamrolling the competition and looking to the future. They had just released Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, which sold 12 million units in the first four hours. A slimmer version of the PlayStation 2 had already been released, and its online component was going strong. However, the gravy train was about to hit a major brick in the wall, and Microsoft was getting ready to fire on all cylinders. The future looked bright, but the reality was anything but. Check back with Mojo Play soon, as we'll be taking a look at both the PlayStation 3 and PS4 in part 2 of our history of the PlayStation. Thanks for watching.